Well, it was fun while it lasted. It looks like current Marvel Editor-in-Chief C.B. Sabolsky sided with the far-left ideologues that have run Marvel Comics into a political gutter. <sighs> well, at least I'll save money. I guess this was bound to happen. A couple of people have been very wary of C.B. Sabolsky. I wanted to give the guy a chance. After all, he did take over in the middle of a mini meltdown at Marvel. But it looks like those fears were justified. In a recent CBS interview, Sabolsky laid out his plans for Marvel. And it looks like they're quadrupling down on the identity politics. Quote, We're 100% committed to diversity. Really? How many open conservatives do you have working at Marvel? How many of your creators tell stories from a moderate, centrist, right-wing, or apolitical point of view? How many of your characters express those political views? If you were committed to diversity, it would include diversity of thought and opinion. And as you're about to show, CB, you guys aren't really interested in that. Quote, Marvel is the world outside your window, and we want not only our characters, but our creative talent to reflect that world, and it hasn't been an easy road, to be honest with you. Yes, I imagine that trying to determine the racial, ethnic, and sexual identity of new talent might prove tricky if you're just looking at writing and drawing samples. However, will you hire that black, transgender, quadriplegic lesbian if you can only see their work? It's almost like you have to judge people based on their talent and skill, not their appearances. He goes on, quote, Going back to the 60s when Marvel was created, it was created by a number of white men here in New York City who were working in our studio. But now, we do not have any artists that work in Marvel. All of our writers and artists are freelancers that live around the world, so our talent base has diversified almost more quickly than our character base. Well, that explains part of why the books end up being such a mess. Having everybody in-house makes it easier to conference with creative teams on different books and make sure things are cohesive. Sure, video chat and emails can do this, but there's something to be said about going out for lunch and just casually talking things out. But look at the dig at the people who created modern Marvel comics. First of all, these weren't just a number of white men. Many of these men were Jewish, so nice job erasing their identity, CB. Second of all, the stories they created were crafted around broad concepts, not just their identities. The fact that most of the prominent Marvel characters were created by Jewish men doesn't change the diverse cast of characters they created. It was that diversity set in the hyper-real version of New York that made Marvel special. To tear this down as something bad is bizarre. It's more bizarre, though, to think that simply adding people from so-called diverse backgrounds will make for a better book. It doesn't, especially if the people are only being hired because of their identities and not because of the interesting ideas they might bring to the company. If you want to see where this warped logic can go, look at Sana Amanat. She said in the interview about Kamala Khan, quote, People paid attention because there was something about the idea of Kamala Khan and it has nothing to do with being Muslim or South Asian or whatever. Bullshit. Excuse me. Bullshit. You know full well the only reason people paid attention to Kamala Khan is because of her religion and race. If she had been a blonde-haired, blue-eyed white girl named Vanilla White Cotton, nobody would have thought twice about the character. We know the character isn't that interesting to people because the sales for the single issues and trades have dropped to the point that Marvel considered canceling the book several times. But you were saying, But something about the idea of representation and having a character like that who is totally unexpected that I think people have been craving for such a long time. Oh, so it was about her religion and race. I'm just curious, how do you speak out of both sides of your mouth when it's so full of shit? If you're gonna lie, do it better. Nobody was craving a character who makes giant fists except for some dudes who go to the Flossom Street Fair and Sister Girl ain't even the right sex for that. Nobody was jonesing for this particular power set, let alone having it with the South Asian Muslim. You created the character to play politics and then ran the character into the ground by keeping her as one-dimensional and unrelatable as possible and cramming in tons of politics into most of the stories. You wore out the welcome on the character within a year and continued to do that because no one had the sense to tell you that making her a know-it-all was a turnoff to young readers. The article also says that Amanat, quote, is also credited with bringing author Ta-Nehisi Coates on board. Coates authors Black Panther and will also write for Captain America. Yeah, how'd that work out for you? Black Panther crashed. 
Black Panther World of Wakanda tanked within the first few issues, and Black Panther and the crew got cancelled before the second issue went to print. You know what would be a good idea? Let Coates write Captain America and reboot Black Panther so the Wakandans are now black slaves in space. Now, people may think I'm being rough on Amanat. Oh no, I haven't even started. Look at this shit here. Quote, I hope to be very much a lifestyle brand, Amanat said. What the fuck are you talking about? You work at Marvel, not Bed Bath & Beyond. You sell books, not body salt. Do you know what industry you even work in? She goes on, quote, and also, the other big thing that's going to happen at Marvel is, I don't think it's going to be associated as a boy brand. I hate to break it to you, sweetheart, but Marvel is a boy brand. Most of the fans of American comics are male. I know you don't like that because masculinity is toxic and boys are the most evil thing since the creation of personal hygiene. But it's the truth. You're just going to have to untangle those feminist panties of yours. If you run away the male fans, you won't be able to sell that many books. We know this because your numbers have stagnated all this time. Oh, I can hear you now. But girls read comics. Yeah, not superhero comics. But girls read manga. Nothing you publish is a tenth as good as the shittiest manga that's ever been imported to America. And most of the manga that girls read is shonen, i.e. boys, manga. But girls will buy comics. You mean like they're buying them now. Which is why your current sales are just a little bit higher than what they were in 1998. Looks like all those girls and women aren't showing up to buy your dollar store knockoffs of better written characters. So here's my suggestion. Have a Coke and a smile and shut the fuck up. Marvel has always been, wait, are you still talking? Are you kidding? Your little experiment has left you with pretty much the same numbers you had when you started. But go on. Let's hear your bullshit spit. Marvel has always been inclusive. And I think it should be a place that anyone who looks at that red logo and they realize, oh yeah, that's just a really cool entertainment company. Well, you pretty much ruined that. They're going to see that when they look at the films, until you guys inject the politics into the MCU. But the books, you've ruined. Nobody looks at the Marvel logo on a comic and thinks it's a really cool comic book company, which is what you really should be shooting for. They see it as a hub of identity politics, which, depending on their point of view, is a good or bad thing. You guys spent so much time trying to taint the original characters, replace them with your cheap knockoffs, and tear down anyone who wanted more action-driven stories that there's going to be an asterisk next to the Marvel logo for a long time. The article wraps up with Zabolski saying, quote, Everyone who works in this role at Marvel, be it, you know, someone who's an assistant editor, or even the people who letter the book, or someone who works in our accounting department, everybody here works at Marvel because they love it. And we all have ideas. And we are all creative in our own right, you know? And we all contribute to the success of this company and have put Marvel on the path where we are now. And how's that working out for you? Now that dozens of comic book stores have closed, in part because the largest comic book publisher makes books the stores can't sell. Having a large portion of your audience quit buying your books because of all the politics. Watching not one, not two, but three different events crash and burn because of the online political antics of your creators. It looks like you've created a path that plays to politics instead of a path that builds an audience. The weird part is that I'm one of the people you want to buy your books. I enjoy stories about different cultures and people. That's one of the reasons I read the book The Chosen. That's why I read Ed Swim, Two Boys. That's why I read The Kite Runner. It's one of the reasons why I love manga. But all of those books have something in common that Marvel books lack. Great characters in storytelling. Marvel used to be fantastic at creating great characters and stories, but lately it's all been about playing politics. And honestly, I just don't find being gay or female or some minority or belonging to some religion all that interesting. I'm definitely not looking for that when I want to pick up a superhero book where I'm expecting action. I mean, you're busting my balls, Sabelski. You're going down a path I can't follow. I want to support you. I want to give Marvel my money, but when you turn my favorite character into a hot dog eating hipster with girly hips, there's nothing I can do but Marvel at what's happened to Marvel. But what do I know? I'm just some guy.